You can have a car, but when you have a lowrider, it's a whole different story because it's your individuality. You're saying, I'm here. I don't need to be like you. I don't want to be like you. I'm going to be me, and this is me. This is who I am. This is what I represent. I own a 1964 Chevy Impala. It's black on the bottom. It's got fade-in, fade-out patterns on the side with the purple pearl in it. The skirts, they have murals on them. The top, it's got a candy purple flake to it. The uh, engine of the car, it's a 350 with a 700R transmission. The majority of the engine has been chromed out with certain parts of it being engraved. Door handles, bumper guards, the antenna, soft touches of engraving, just to give it that mix. I have hydraulics, but I'm running at square dumps, and again, it's chromed out with uh, uh, engraving. I'm running straight lace, true rays. These are the same type of rims that I had back in my cars in the 1979, 1980s. The interior of the car is pretty much original, except for the seats, so we had them redone with black, and then we had purple stitching put into it to go along with the car. I wanted a soft pattern, and I wanted it to be that when you're looking at it, you think the car's all black. And then when the sun hits it, depending on where you're standing on the vehicle, you'll say, oh, look at that. It changed colors. Look at how much purple is actually in the car, which you never see when you're looking from a certain perspective of it. When I got it, it was drivable, but basically everything has been changed on the car. So it's not a ground up restoration, but we've changed everything than what we started out with. I was born in Santa Barbara and raised in Carboneria. I came from a large family, nine siblings. Of the nine, I'm number seven of nine. My mom, her job was to keep everybody in order. Go to school, educate yourself, graduate, stay on top of it. My dad, he was a gardener. He was raised in Mexico, wasn't able to speak English, so what did he do? Well, he went and worked the, the lemon field. And then from there, he switched over to being a gardener. He became the lead gardener. And then from there, for the whole Santa Barbara School District, he became the gardener. He wasn't even educated in the United States. He didn't let language be a barrier, and so he did what he had to do to provide for his family. My grandmother's name was Maria Zaragoza. She came with her three kids during the Mexican Revolution. She came here and she worked the fields. My grandmother is a pillar of education for our family, but she was a very smart woman. She had a little house in Carpinteria. And when they built the freeway, they had to relocate her. She says, I'm not selling my house and I'm not moving. So they had to pay her for her property and they moved her house. And with that money, she bought two acres of property. And that's why we were able, we were fortunate to have my grandmother, my aunt, my other aunt and us all living in this one cul-de-sac. One of the, the last things that my grandmother said Six months before she died, on Christmas Eve, she told everybody. This is my last year I'm going to spend with all of you. And I want you to know that I'm proud of everybody. But I need a lawyer. I need a nurse. I need teachers. I need all of you go to school and get your education. You talk about a role model, that's a role model because that one person was able to create 50 professionals, psychiatrists, nurses, doctors, lawyer. That's my grandmother and the power of my grandmother. How I got to where I am is a long story. Well, the school I went to is the same school that my mother went to, which was a segregated school. But right away in school, you're classified. 
They didn't want you to be more successful. The counselor came up to me and says, Tomas, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're a senior, you're going to graduate, where you want to apply? I said, I want to go to UCLA. And she's like, UCLA? I'm like, yeah. She's like, nah. We should shoot for something a little more realistic. And when she told me, no, we couldn't do it, then I just said, well, forget it then. I don't need to go to school. I can figure it out. I'll make it on my own. I didn't go to college because they told me I couldn't go to UCLA, so I went to work. It wasn't until my cousin, who's a psychiatrist, graduated from UCLA, and I went to the Chicano graduation. One person got up on that stand, and he touched me with his story. He said, you know, it's beautiful that we have all these rasa here today celebrating. I wish my parents could be here, but they're not because they're working in the fields. And they have to work in the fields so that I could graduate from UCLA. When I go back, they're not gonna have to work anymore. When he finished talking, I turned to my mom and I said, I'm gonna go to UCLA. My political activism at UCLA, was what every school I've been involved with always gets me into trouble. The dean of students was very familiar with me. The dean of students is the one who decides, hey, if you get in trouble, you get kicked out. During my conversation with the dean of students, we got into an argument, and I thought I was talking about the precedent that he was saying and relying on hearsay statements. And he's like, you need to become a lawyer. When you graduate, come to me. We're going to get you into law school. I am a criminal defense attorney. I worked for the Public Defender's Office in LA County for 13 years. I left and I've been in private practice, my own practice for eight years now. The thing that keeps me inspired and keeps me motivated to keep doing what I'm doing is helping people. Every one of my cases is personal to me because I tell them everybody deserves a second chance. People always ask me, well, how did you make a decision to become a lawyer? How do you defend and speak up for yourself? Where did I learn that is the real question. And that came back in 1972. Cesar Chavez was marching through our town from Carpinteria all the way to through Santa Barbara up to Goleta. But the most significant thing that happened during that march was as we're walking on the frontage road next to the freeway and we're coming to this one portion where there's a big hill. I'm like, oh, we got to walk up this big hill. And rather than go up the big hill, we diverted. We go on the freeway and the freeway is literally stopped for our march. That was the first time I realized the power of our community, what we can do. You have to organize. You, have, you can't let people take advantage of you. We're at a time now where we all know the power that we possess. It's the ability to exert that power that we all need to do. How does one person affect and change the community? You have to start with yourself. You have to know who you are. You have to know where you come from. You have to know where you want to go. And then you need to set those goals. You're going to be told no, 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 no. But if you really want it, you're going to turn those no's into yeses. The lowrider community is like every other community in that it's a brotherhood or a sisterhood. You get a group of friends who, if something goes wrong, you can count on them. That's what the lowrider community is about. We help each other, not because we want something back, just because that's the brotherhood. That's the nature of our game. What do I love most about my car? Is being lifted. I've never forgot the feeling of being locked up and the jitteriness as you're locked up all the way. And then you see another car coming and boom, you hit a switch and boom, you hit another switch and oh, now it's on, game on. And there may be a lot of things that you like about it, but for me, the best thing is the ability to hit switches whenever I want. I have a beautiful Mercedes. And when I'm in that Mercedes, man, I wish I was in my 64 locked up. I'm never in my 64 saying, I wish I was in my Mercedes. That's the difference of the love and the passion when you, that you have for a car. The one thing I tell to everyone that I speak to, se puede, si se puede. You have to believe in yourself. It sounds corny to say that, do you believe in yourself? But you have to, 
because you're gonna be told no, you're gonna have failures. That's part of life. But you learn from it, you grow from it, you move on, you progress. You believe and you will achieve. My name is Tomas Requejo. I'm a trial attorney and I'm a lowrider role model.